Good afternoon, everybody. So today is part two of Trust in the Lord. And we are going to talk about seeing the good. So if you go to Philippians 4 and 8, it says, and I believe it is Paul talking, as for most of the New Testament, it's Paul talking. Um, and he says, and now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and worthy of praise. So, um, you know, when I read that and really when I thought about it it was always thinking about you know when you are dealing with bad, hard times or bad times what we consider hard times and bad times um and to go back and remember the things that god had done in your life that were praiseworthy so and i truly believe that is part of it but God has really started convicting me about um, also seeing the good in people. Now, I don't know about anybody else. I know there are a lot of people who are very optimistic um, when it comes to others who do truly see the good in them, very um, trusting and um, I'm not one of those. <laughs> I have come a very far away from where I used to be. Um, so I can see somebody do something and consider they're having a bad day. Or, you know what, um, maybe, you know, if somebody cut me off in traffic, I don't automatically take it personal. I'm like, okay, maybe, you know, something happened maybe they're late for work maybe um you know they they're just in a hurry you know whatever is going on they got to get somewhere and it, it obviously is important to them so i don't have as hard a time now if you cut me off and like i feel like i almost hit you of course my emotions change a little bit but I used to be way different um and just automatically you know take it personal like these people really know me and they you know cut me off like they know me personally or trying to you know do something to me personally and now I just don't feel that way also you know just all types of situations but there are other times that I see people and I quickly do not assume good things. I come up with scenarios in my mind or um, I begin to judge them by their appearances or maybe something they're doing. Um, and that's not <laughs> the way God. God wants us to fix our thoughts on what is true. What's true? God made everybody. We are all God's children. So whether you agree with someone's opinion about something, whether you agree with um, their lifestyle, whatever, the truth is they are all children of God. Now, if they have decided, let's put it this way, because God said that his children would know his name. And God said that, you know, once you um, confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and Savior, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit. You are now a child of God. Okay, so I, there are those who are not his children, but they were definitely made by his hand. They are his creations and they can choose to be adapted into that family. So we are still supposed to treat them with the worth of 
God's hands on them. It is not our place to judge them. It is not our place to put them in hell. It's not our place to tell them, you know, when I say tell them how to live their life, I mean in like being judgmental and critical, excuse me. <coughs> um, no, you know, we're supposed to share God's love. We're supposed to have thoughts about people that are true and noble and pure and praiseworthy. Um, so it's not about my comfort. And, and I don't know how many people, how many of you will understand or even, um, feel where I'm coming from on this, but it was definitely something God has been really talking in to me about. And, um, that's why we are always not to remember where we came from and remember where God has brought us from in a way of guilt or conviction but in a way of humility stating i can have compassion with who you are because i was that i have lived that life i have been there i have believed the same things that you believe about life about god about um this world i have um been into, watched, um, listened to, spoke out of my mouth, very worldly things, not knowing how they were affecting me, not knowing how they were affecting other people. Um, and so it is not right. And I am completely out of place to be judgmental. Um, I should be thinking Good thoughts. Here's another thing about this, and this is about the trust in God part. We are not to put our trust in humans. God said that. We're humans. Just like I, you know, I wouldn't, of course, I want to be someone that, that um, people can trust, trust with you know, but I am only human. So there may be times that I don't react the way that someone thinks I should have reacted and I disappoint them. Or I, you know, come in my flesh and when you said something, I got, you know, um, upset or, you know, felt some type of way, got in my feelings and reacted out of my flesh and hurt your feelings because I'm human. And I can say I'm sorry, but the feelings were hurt. So that's what I mean by we're only human, so we can only trust humans so far. And then we have to take those mistakes in consideration. We have to take their faults, their failures, their weaknesses into consideration because we are only human. That's why we trust God. But I have a hard time with the same thing. When I see somebody's motives are coming from someplace completely wrong, I was raised to speak my mind, to call you out, to call those motives out so as not to be taken advantage of. So it was not, and I've, I've always thought that was a strength of mine where, you know, I've used that as a strength where you're not going to take advantage of me. You're not going to step on me. I see right through you. Okay. It's a blessing to have discernment, but it is not my place to put someone in their place. That is God's place. I'm supposed to see the good in that person. So when people have ulterior motives, it could be something um, spiritual, um, which if you're going to fight in the spirit, that means you're in prayer. You're not fighting with your words. You're fighting in prayer. It could be that person's own defense mechanisms and coming from a place of pain. Until God reveals that to you, you are supposed to see the good in people. You are supposed to 
think thoughts that are praiseworthy. Um, God says to be um, cunning, but also as, as like a dove. So you're supposed to be able to see it through prayer, through the Holy Spirit revealing things to you so you can see the motives, but you are supposed to respond in humility. And that, I don't know about anybody else, but that is hard for me, especially if, <laughs> I, and this is just something I've recognized lately, especially if it is a male and I don't know where that stems from, Honestly, no, I, I do have a harder, harder time when like, I have an easier time being combative when it's a male, but I do see it if it's a female and then I like shy away from like, yeah, I don't, I don't trust you. So I'm going to keep my arms length. Living a life with God is not about comfort. It is a place living with a life with God is literally being uncomfortable, being vulnerable, being willing to be those things to save souls. So, you know, if I'm with somebody and they may be watching something, seeing something, talking about something that's making me completely uncomfortable, but it could also be an opportunity to hear the voice of God and that person see, okay, I know that this is not where their comfort is, but she is, she's not even moving. She's not even judging me. She's not even offended. Like she's still loving all on me or, you know, She's still, you know, acting like it's nothing. She's not turning her nose up at me because of who I am. And that's, that's God. You know, God lives in us. And we watch all kinds of things that he would not agree with. Our eyes see and take in things that he would not agree with. Our ears take in things that he would not agree with. And I'm not talking about the stuff that you just happen to come across. No, I'm just talking about stuff that you choose to look at, you choose to hear, you choose to speak, conversations you choose to have that God would not be pleased with. But guess what? He does not turn his nose up. He does not. Now he, it is his job to change you. But all of the changing that God has done for me, changing of the music that I listen to, changing of the things that I watch, changing... And there's a whole bunch of changing that still needs to happen right here. But the changing that he has, so I talk different. It has really, truly come because he has just showed me so much mercy and so much love. And I was just recognize how he just accepts me as I am and continues to love me no matter how many times I mess up, no many times I fall. He continues to just pour his love on me as long as I am trying, as long as I am spending time with him, going out of my way to seek him. He is needing me. He is seeking. He is there. He is, he is, is my strength in those times where I am weak. He is. And so what he is saying to us is when you come in contact with somebody else, work on not automatically seeing the negative or the bad because we have we put up these defenses especially when we come across someone who may trigger something that we've experienced in our past and so we automatically put up a, a defense going mm -mm, no I don't I don't it's one thing to be discerning it's another thing is if God, what if God called you to speak a word to somebody who makes you completely uncomfortable because they, there is a trigger there because there is a trigger that says, watch out. You know what happened last time. 
God said, I am your defense. I literally put a wall of protection around you. I'm not going to let nothing happen to you, especially if I have called you to this place, if I've called you to this person, if I've called you, you know, sometimes it's a group or certain certain type of person, certain individuals who look a certain way. And I'm not talking about racism. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about... I, it's hard for me to, I, at this time I'm, I'm having a hard time explaining, um, but let's just say you dated a certain type of person who treated you really bad and maybe they um, dressed a certain way, wore a certain cologne, walked a certain way. Sometimes there could be people who trigger certain things that we've had relationships, bad relationships, whether it be someone we dated, it could be a group of, maybe you were in school, there was a group of girls um, who um, made you feel less than. And so when you come in contact with certain females that remind you of those girls, you shun away from them or you put up a defense so you don't get close to them. And, or maybe it's a group of um, people at work who um, come across a certain way. I know I've worked with individuals and it seems like, it seems like humans are, are always in, it seems like no matter where you work, or um, if you're in an organization, whatever organization, whether you work, church, it seems like there's always the same types of people. And that's what I mean. Like you, so then you shun away from those people who have already, um, who cause a trigger because they've already mis, there's already been mistrust between you and those type of people. So when you come across those type of people again, you don't feel the trust. You know that, okay, I can see their motives or I can already see where this is going. I see the type of people they are. But God is like, how about you think on what is praiseworthy about these individuals? What is something positive for each individual person that you come across? Think of that and, and then hear their pain Find a way to be compassionate. How can you speak with these people? And this is, I'm telling you, I don't know about anybody else. Maybe everybody else doesn't have trust issues like me. I do. I didn't even realize how much I do um, until God has really been kind of talking to me. Um, but yeah, I, um, I would definitely put up a fence very quickly. I would definitely, you know, and now... I used to be quick with my tongue, so um, that was always good, but I just would be quick with it, I would, woo, and um, so God humbled me in that way, like your opinion doesn't always, isn't always right or accurate, and it's not always appropriate, and it's not in humility at all. So I, now, instead of speaking, I kind of shy away and I know that people notice it because I have an outgoing personality so when I'm not outgoing with them they can feel and sense okay she's creating distance for some reason and that in hindsight is not going to bring them closer to Christ they're not going to see Christ in me when I shun them um so, and not even realizing I'm shunning more, it's protective. It's protecting my feelings. I don't want you to take advantage of me. I don't want you to say anything out the way. I don't want to say anything out the way to you. And I don't want you to see any facial expressions that would lead you to know exactly what I'm thinking. But if I line my thoughts up with God, 
they wouldn't see those facial expressions. If I put my trust in God for these people and what, why these people, because God is not accidental. He is, he knows exactly what he's doing. So if you come in contact with someone, it is for a reason. Now, I'm not telling you that every single person you come in contact with, you are to minister to. There are some times where it is a lesson of discernment. But that's why you have to stay and trust in God and where he leads you, what he's trying to tell you about these, this person. Um, if he needs you to speak life into this person, pray for this person, hear them, be compassionate with them. Or if he is trying to show you, okay, this person has come for the wrong reasons and then I need you to leave them alone. Because that's possible. But... We, if our first line of coming to people is defense and I just automatically am looking for you to try to take advantage of me or um, do you have ulterior motives or, you know, oh, I see how you're dressed or I see, you know, the kind of music you listen to or I see the kind of people you hang with so I, don't, I know I can't trust you, whatever it is, um, that's not what God wants. God wants you to hear him. And to see people like he sees them through these eyes of um, love. Or they like, I, there's this song that I listen to, put your love glasses on. So to see them through God's love and compassion and giving people the benefit of the doubt. Oh, that's a difficult one, you know, especially on more than one occasion. To give people the benefit of the doubt numerous times because it does say God says we are to make um a, you know make a way for people's faults we are supposed to take their weaknesses and faults into consideration we are supposed to forgive we are supposed to be loving and compassionate and let God take care of the rest let God take care of the rest we don't have the power that God has God has a wonderful power God is, is all powerful and you know, it is a wonderful thing to see someone saved and it is even more wonderful to be used to speak life into somebody, especially someone who, who is not a believer. And so, you know, we really have to work on fixing our thoughts on what is true and honorable because it is not honorable some you know the things that we think are not always honorable even about our loved ones when we want them so badly to be saved and to know god the way we know them um friends are you know people that that are friends of ours um people that um you know just people we we really a, you know highly respect in our lives but know like we really want them to know God the way we know them want them to know God the way we do then we have a hard time with their process with their um, yeah with with the process that God takes them through and we're not supposed to you know God, we pray to God and let God do all the work. And he will. I mean, he said that we ask anything in Jesus' name that is in his will. His will is to save people. Then, you know, but our thoughts can't be, oh, they're never going to change. Oh, here they go again. Are they calling me about this again? Are they seriously in the same situation? Because how many times have we come to God and said, Lord, I'm sorry. I messed up again. And it's the same thing over and over and over again. He doesn't roll his eyes and go, oh, here they go again. God is like, yes, they are one step closer to being set free and of that bondage. Because I know. I believe. And that's the honorable thoughts. When we go, look at what God is going to do in their life. God said that, that he will do immeasurably more than I could ever think or dream. So look, those are honorable thoughts. You know, if you're having thoughts about somebody and if they could read your mind, they would be hurt. Those are not honorable thoughts. So we have to really work hard 
to give those things over to God that are not honorable and say, Lord, forgive me because I wouldn't want someone to think that way about me. I want to be forgiven. I want to be, I want to be shown mercy. I want to see people the way you see them, Lord. I want to trust you fully for each and every day, each and every encounter, God. It is all about bringing you glory and letting people see your love and your grace and your mercy through me. To be able to just love on people so that they're like, I want to know what she has. I want to I want to feel that good all the time. I want to I want to feel that love and embrace when that that she exudes when I'm around her. What is that? That's God. That's God. Now I can tell you, Lord, I have to work, work, work. This is preaching to me more than it's preaching to you. But I hope you understand this word. I hope you can um this this these trust uh, this trust series will begin to really speak and change us because I would really like to see believers seem different. You know, I would like the world to see believers differently, where they're like, yeah, believe people who believe in Jesus Christ are so sweet and loving and compassionate and merciful. Oh my goodness, that's the way God wants us to be seen. Uh, and it's just so terrible, the, the bad rap that we get because people are so judgmental and critical. And, and, you know, even to other believers, you know, we really need to work on that. We really need to, to, to show the world the real Jesus, not us. The world shouldn't see us. He should, the world needs to see Jesus and Lord forgive us for not being the billboard that you would like us to be for not showing your name the way it should be seen Lord Father God help us to do better in the precious name of Jesus I plead the blood of Jesus over you and myself that um, he will protect us as always and deliver us from our pride that we may have good, true, honorable, pure, lovely thoughts about his children and about every creation that he has made. In Jesus' name, I pray this for you and for myself. Amen. As always, I love you. God loves you. Have a wonderful day.